Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Police believe the owner of a restaurant on the square in Harrison has left the area to avoid prosecution. According to reports, Harrison police have been issued a arrest warrant for 67-year-old Donald William Alexander, also known as Charlie Smith. He faces five counts of identity fraud, hidden cameras, computers, and hard drives were seized from the hot dog shop on the square in April. At the time, police said that Smith was out of state. Officers, uh, officers also discovered documents containing multiple names, dates of births, and social security numbers. The Department of Homeland Security is reportedly analyzing the video and computer evidence at this time. The hot dog shop has not reopened since that raid. 42-year-old Joshua Birmingham is facing seven charges involving drugs and firearms following a compliance visit by officers from five law enforcement agencies. Officers conducted at a uh, Arkansas Community Corrections compliance visit at Birmingham's residence. When they arrived, officers located approximately two grams of methamphetamine along with three other types of drugs and drug paraphernalia. Just over $4,000 was also discovered. Officers from the Baxter County Sheriff's Office, the Mountain Home Police Department, the 14th Judicial District's Drug Task Force, and Gasville Police Department, along with the Cotter Police Department, conducted the compliance visit. A Fulton County man has been arrested in the state of California 10 months after local law enforcement issued a warrant for his arrest in connection with an investigation into an attempt to smuggle drugs into the Baxter County Detention Center using a Bible. Last August, 32-year-old Kevin Birch went to the Baxter County Detention Center to deliver a Bible to inmate Mikhail Short of Midway. The Bible was taken by a jail supervisor and upon inspection, methamphetamine, marijuana, and tobacco were found in a vacuum seal baggie. Birch was, uh, excuse me, Birch was apprehended in California when it was learned he allegedly attempted to run over someone. He has since been returned to the Baxter County Detention Center and being held on a $75,000 bond. A tunnel has collapsed underneath a parking lot in Eureka Springs. The hole is about 20 feet deep as of news time. Officials say that sinkholes are fairly common along the street where the parking lot sits. The street runs along the eastern branch of Leatherwood Creek, which flows through a tunnel underneath buildings and parking lots in the city. City Public Works Director Dwayne Allen says there have been five tunnel evac uh, uh, excavations, I should say, and repair projects along the street in the past decade. Parking lot owner John Cross says he'll pay the initial cost to repair the recently collapsed tunnel, but then he plans to request reimbursement from the city. North Arkansas Rusty Wheels Old Engine Club are celebrating their 40th anniversary with a tractor show this weekend at the club's location six miles south of Harrison on Highway 65. The featured engine will be the Hercules. Tractors of all types and designs will be on display. There will be gas engines, steam engines, antique vehicles, and tractors along with arts and crafts in the flea market and antique vendors set up during the event. The Parade of Power and the Tractor Pool will be held on Saturday at 1 p.m. Plowing demonstrations will also be held along with a miniature train ride for the kids. The admission to the tractor show is free. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at some headline news from around the region. But first, here's this week's closing livestock report from Sammy Klein, brought to you by Quality Feed Grains of Harrison and Belfont. This is Sammy Klein, Federal State Livestock Market News Service, reporting sale in North Arkansas Livestock Auction Green Force, Unit 6. Cattle receipts, 2,761. Last week, 2,132. Year ago, 2,191. Compared to last week, feeder steers and bulls steadied nine dollars higher, mostly one to four dollars higher. Feeder heifers steadied four dollars higher. Slaughter cows one to three dollars lower. 
started with a $71 and over. Had several groups of unweaned calves and a few value added cattle. Feeder steers mean like one, three to 400 pounds, 177 to 194, four to 500 pounds, 167 to 190, five to 600 pounds, 155 to 175, six to 700 pounds, 144 to 162 with some caves at 142 to 158. Feeder heifers mean large ones. Three, excuse me. Feeder heifers mean large ones, three, 400 pounds. 152 to 165, 4 to 500 pounds, 144 to 160, 5 to 600 pounds, 132 to 145, 6 to 700 pounds, 130 to 135, with some kids at 125 to 132. Rip has 750 by 4 pounds at dollar 25. Replacement cows, medium large ones and two. Two to seven year old, second, third stage, a few at 775 to 975 per head. Seven ten year old cow, second, third stage, fifty one to fifty four, or seven ten to seven fifty per head. Cow calf pairs mean large ones and twos, two to seven year old, nine hundred fifty two hundred fifty pound cows, one two hundred pound calves at side, nine seventy five to twelve twenty five per pair. Two to three hundred pound calves at side, thousand fifty to fourteen twenty five per pair. From seven to ten year old cows with one three hundred pound calves at side, seven hundred to thousand fifty per pair. Slaughter cows, boners, 50 to 55, high dress, 55 to 58, low dress, 47 to 48. Lean, 47 to 54, high dress, 54 to 56, low dress, 40 to 46. Slaughter bulls, grade 1s and 2s, 1,100 pounds, 74 to 79. High dress, 79, 50 to 84, 50, low dress, 70 to 72. That's Mark A. Sammy Time reporting. Thank you. On any given day here at Main Street Service Center, we might be working on a Ford like's on the four post lift over my shoulder, or an Infiniti that's back on the back bay, or a Toyota, or a BMW, or right here a Hyundai. You just never know what's going to come into the shop and what their needs might be. But you can rest assured that at Main Street Service Center, whatever you're driving, we can take care of it for you, whether it's oil and filter changes all the way up to engine and transmission replacements. And get this, we've been in business for 29 years, and there's still things that we can't do, and we're not too proud to say it. So if you bring us something and it's over our head or out of our capabilities of expertise or tools, we're not too proud to say it because we want your vehicle fixed correctly, right, and the first time. Summer is just around the corner and the staff at Harness Boots and Shoes are ready with all the latest styles of tennis shoes, sandals, dress shoes, casual shoes, boots, and hiking shoes. You'll find the most popular brands such as Merrill, Birkenstock, Chaco, New Balance, and Twisted X for men, women, and children. And if you don't find the style or color you want in stock, they'll be happy to order them for you. Don't forget, $10 down will hold anything in the store on Lil Way. Harness Boots and Shoes on the west side of the square in beautiful downtown Harrison. A former lobbyist has pled guilty in a multi-million dollar scheme to bribe Arkansas lawmakers and embezzle from a Missouri-based nonprofit where he also worked. Federal prosecutors in the state of Missouri say that Rusty Cranford of Rogers, Arkansas, admitted Thursday to paying bribes to former state senator John Woods, former state representative Henry Wilkins, and an Arkansas state lawmaker referred to as Senator A. Besides working as a lobbyist, Cranford oversaw Springfield, Missouri-based preferred family health cures operations in Arkansas. Woods has been convicted and Wilkins has pled guilty in connection with the scheme. Both await sentencing Cranford faces up to 10 years in a federal penitentiary. A Jonesboro man will spend some 16 years in prison for attempted murder after he told police he tried to kill his fiance. On August 3, 2017, Jonesboro police responded to a reported overdose and when they arrived they found the woman clinging to life and covered in blood. The woman, who was later identified as John, as, as John Cuddiff's fiance at the time, was flown to a Little Rock hospital in critical condition. Cuddiff reportedly admitted he punched the victim several times in the face 
nose, and cheek area. He also told investigators that he had been smoking methamphetamine and that uh, he caused the injuries to his fiance in an attempt to kill her. A former Truman, Arkansas teacher has been sentenced to three years probation for sending sexually explicit text messages to a student. 29-year-old Cannon Hoover entered the negotiated plea of guilty this week to sexual indecency with a child. Second Judicial Circuit Judge Pam Honeycutt sentenced him to 36 months probation with 12 months suspended in position of that sentence. The uh, judge also ordered Hoover to pay court costs and fines and register as a sex offender. A second charge of computer child pornography was null prost. Hoover, who taught choir and golf at Truman High School, was arrested in 2016 after police said he sent improper text messages to one of the students. The messages, according to the court documents, were sexual in nature and had been sent on a school computer assigned to Hoover. And an Arkansas man who prosecutors allege initially infected himself with the HIV virus has told a judge that he did it so he could expose others to the deadly virus. 25-year-old Stephen Koch of Scranton, Arkansas has pled guilty to attempting to expose other people to the HIV and to drug and child pornography charges. Prosecutors say information on Koch's computer indicated he intentionally infected himself with HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, and planned to initially deceive people about his HIV status. Koch told Circuit Judge Robin Green that he infected himself in order to hurt other people. Green sentenced Koch to 50 years in prison and ordered him to register as a sex offender. The Arkansas Attorney General's office says a member of the commission that awards licenses to grow medical marijuana has accused an unsuccessful applicant of trying to bribe him. The state Supreme Court has released a previously sealed letter from Attorney General Leslie Rutledge's office that detailed the bribery allegation and most of which Rutledge's office said to remain unsubstantiated and is being investigated by law enforcement. In the letter, Rutledge said a member of the state's Medical Marijuana Commission claimed he was offered a bribe by Natural State's uh, company, which had applied unsuccessfully for the license. Before we take a look at the weather forecast, as we move into the weekend, here's the way the stock market ended the week. temperatures make it a little bit uncomfortable if you've got things to do outside, but we might as well get used to it. It's that time of the year. 88 degrees this afternoon. Again, the humidity around 48, 50 percent, depending on where you were. Uh, it was muggy if you had to be outside, but it's going to be even worse as we move through the weekend. Temperatures are going to increase. The humidity will increase. And of course, uh, the uh, unsatisfactory feeling of being outside is going to be there as well. Here's the way it looks as we move on into the next five days. Tomorrow is going to be even warmer than today. Saturday afternoon temperatures under partly cloudy skies expected to be around 90 degrees. On Sunday with lots of sunshine we warm up to 93 degrees and we kick off the work week on Monday. Partly cloudy skies and 92. We do have a slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms in the area on Tuesday. 90 degrees for an afternoon high, 60% chance we might get some rain. And then Wednesday, showers and thunderstorms for about the first half of the day. A little bit cooler, 87 degrees and 50% chance of a rainfall. Kind of a cold front moving through, if you will. And hopefully if that system comes through by the middle part of next week, temperatures will be back down in the low to mid 80s, which will be perfect for this time of the year. And hopefully the humidity will drop as well. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at sports from around the region as TK08 News continues. <music> 
Plants, plants, and more plants. That's what you'll find at Camp's Plants in Harrison. Perennials, annuals, ferns, hanging baskets, shrubs, roses, decorative trees, and the largest selection of garden vegetables in the area. With different varieties arriving weekly, you're sure to find the perfect plant, shrub, or tree at the best price in the area. Camps, Plants, and Business for over 33 years in Harrison. Inland Waste Solutions works diligently to be good stewards of the environment. Reducing waste via curbside recycling services, Inland Waste Solutions takes this mission seriously, but they need your help. When putting your waste and recyclables in their respective curbside containers, be sure that cross-contamination doesn't occur. Please only place recyclable materials in the yellow top bins. Check your recycling do's and don'ts list before you throw any item into the yellow top recycle bin. Together, we can make a difference. Inland Waste Solutions, local people serving local people in Harrison. Starting today at noon through midnight on Sunday, no angler will need a fishing license or a trout permit to fish anywhere in the state of Arkansas. An annual tradition sponsored by the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission and approved by Governor Asa Hutchison, uh, free Fishing Days furnishes many people the opportunity to enjoy the amazing angling and the natural state has that the natural state has to offer in a lot of different places. An annual fishing license is only ten dollars and fifty cents, but officials believe the additional act of needing the license can be a barrier to trying out angling for the first time or for people who only want to go once or twice a year. Senior Jalen Bacon and Kristen Revere Ladslew earned All-American honors to highlight Wednesday's action among a program uh, that a program record five men's student athletes representing the Arkansas State University track and field program in the NCAA Outdoor Championships historic Hayward Field event. Bacon was edged out of the final of the 100-meter dash by fractions of a second. Bacon was uh, scored in the third of his heat and was ninth overall, missing out on the final. With the ninth place finish, Bacon earns second-team All-American status, his third All-American honors outdoor, and fifth of his total career. Miles Mikolas re rebounded his first loss of the season to pitch a three-hit ball over seven innings and lead the St. Louis Cardinals over the Miami Marlins 4-1. to one. Mikolas allowed an unearned run, struck out five, and walked one, improving to 7-1 and one and lowering his ERA to 2-2-7. Two, two, Jordan Hicks and Bud Norris finished the four-hitter. Jose Martinez and Luke Vault homered. Trevor Richards gave up three runs and seven hits in five-plus innings of play. Matt Chapman doubled in the go-ahead run in the sixth inning to make a winner of Paul Blackburn in his first start of the season, and the Oakland Athletics beat the Kansas City Royals 4-1. Matt Olson hit his 13th homer of the season. Steven Spricotti single three times, and Marcus Seaman added two hits and an RBI to help the A's to their third win in four games against the Royals over the past seven days. Bernard Langer is once again finding success at the PGA Tour Championship circuit, ranking second in the money list through 11 events this season. Langer enters this weekend's Principal Charity Classic at Wacombo Club in Des Moines, Iowa, with 37 career victories in the series. But the German has notched just two top tens in five tries in the state of Iowa. That wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. as we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events around the viewing area.